Well, hello, everybody. Are you ready to dive deep, deep into the Pisces? Inward, inward we go from the 16th to the 22nd of February, 2023. Let's go surfing, you see my shirt? Yeah. And I have changed my camera settings so I don't look so jaundiced, but I don't know if this is the right... You can you can check the uh, colors on my shirt, and so I think that's right. But it makes my face and lips look red. All right, we have a little bit of new stuff here as we get into this week. Um, this is going to be a very special week. Not only do we have a new moon in Pisces, but we have some other really big alignments as well, and we're going to be talking about all those and. I forgot my pointer, and I only get one shot at this. I had my my schedule get all switched around, so I only get one shot. If I make mistakes, so be it. You guys are just going to have to laugh at me. All right, so make sure we're on our slum summary slide. All right, um, as you can see, I've added some symbols, right, and... These are indicative of the tropical astrology. So then I can whip these circles around to include all of those symbols. So I don't know if that's too confusing for everybody. If it's too small, let me know. I can make them a little bit bigger, but I find them helpful in designing this slide. For example, over here, right in the middle, this, these, this grouping should actually be more in the middle because it's the biggest energy. It's right undeniably in the middle, which is the new moon in Pisces. The sun is going to go into Pisces, and then shortly thereafter, the moon will catch up and make a new moon in early Pisces. And um, we'll talk about when and all that. Um, and so that's the biggest energy. But we also have Mercury is exalted, and Mercury has some aspects, namely with Mars, that makes this whole thing... Uh, true. We also have, so, so Pisces is that deep inner knowing, right? It's not a mental knowing. It's a, it's an intuitive knowing and Pisces has that and it's deep within. And so we have Neptune and um, Venus that are there. Yeah. That can make things a little bit wonky, dreamy, crazy a little bit. However, it's also Pisces. So the point is the blue circle here includes all the things um, in centering in truth. All right. So when we get to the I Ching, it's about definitely the Pisces. That's this grouping here. But also um, the truth part. So centering, as you're going to see, is all about Pisces. But truth, yeah, Pisces does definitely have that truth, but add it into this I Ching, it's Mercury exalted. Mercury in Aquarius is all about the absolute truth. Once more of it, it's insatiable. So that is included in this blue circle. The blue circle represents the I Ching. The magenta circle represents the tropical astrology in addition to the symbols. And then look what DreamBot has. This is the collective unconscious, our version of it. And we have inner knowing, so that's totally Pisces. We have learning, that's Mercury exalted. And we have action, that's Mercury trine Mars with all this, which goes perfect, exact, on the last day of our surf week, this 22nd. All right, so with that, let's get started. And I've already made my first error. All right. Um, we didn't have anybody that qualified for best comment. I guess people are not really reading any comments anymore, and that's fine. But what I'd like to do is a very special shout out to Radio Hill because, as you're going to see, I added something else into this surf report that has everything to do with what Radio Hill said, but in very Pisces style. I got this insight before Radio Hill made the comment, and I actually started the graph 
And uh, so basically he says, could you possibly give a time of day when these intense planetary interactions take place? Like Monday, for example, I'd like to know when to look out. This is exactly the insight I got just days before Radio Hill made that comment. So I'm going to show you that. And I think it's going to be, I think you guys are going to be happy with this. All right. I'm jazzed by it. All right. And it's going to be closer to where we do the summaries, uh, summary of the influence. All right. I'll get, I'm going to show you a graph that I made. All right. But let's start with the dream bot first. And this was a, a weird one. Remember contraction last week? This is a contracted dream bot run. So it, it, it does include dreams from about a week ago into as uh, early or as late as yesterday. If you're seeing this, I'm recording this video on the 15th of February, 2023. All right. Top word in the collective unconscious is bus. And bus has a couple different contexts. You know, the first first context that most people would think about is the school bus or people gathering in and four wheels and moving forward, transportation. But there's also buses in computers. And it's like the inner part, right? It's where information flows. And so that's into our Pisces alignment here, the red arrows are about the inward journey, the inner knowing, and the bus is part of that, according to like computer science. All right. Um, and the only thing that doesn't really apply is surface, but that's kind of how do we know we're inward if we don't have a surface so to compare it to. So that's why I included that. And everything in those red arrows are about the inner knowing. Then we have the blue arrows, it's about just learning and telling. So it's got a a uh, university in there. So it's about learning mainly and class. So there are a couple of those. So it, that's Mercury and Mercury in Aquarius. That's a big deal because Mercury in Aquarius is exalted, meaning that Mercury or thoughts and communication and travel are at its all-time high. Biggest strength. Mercury has its strongest in Aquarius. And then we have um, the green arrows. This is action. It's just, it's big and bold. And bus is one of those because it can move, it can transport. So it's action. And that's about Mars with mainly with uh, Mercury. So anyway, how do you like, how do you guys like those little glyphs? Does that help? I don't know. It helps me design this thing, in my opinion. So uh, now we have astrology talking about this week in between these vertical black lines, parallel black lines, is our week from the 16th to the 22nd. And let me darken this up so you can see it. And now... You can see around the 20th is when these big things happen. you got Venus that goes into Aries. She's in detriment there, by the way. So she, or harmony or peace, gets weakened. But, um, but until then, still in Pisces. And right at that same shift is a new moon in Pisces. Technically, right at the new moon... Venus is still in Pisces, but we'll take a look at that just to make sure I'm not lying about them. We also have, remember that uh, the decrease or the contraction of last week was uh, Sun and Saturn together. That goes exact on our first day, so we're going to be looking at that. And so uh, that really speaks to ego in a, in a really weakened state. And so that's really important that we're going to be looking at that um, because ego is not really that place of inner knowing, right? It's um, not really all that spiritual in nature. Inner knowing is all about emotions, and sp spiritual and uh, deeper insights and that, that intuition that's, um, that some people really get naturally and other people have to really learn. Some people refuse to learn because they don't think it's real or legit. I think it's extremely legit and it's the biggest 
Arguably, arguably the biggest gift that Pisces offers. Sextiles, we have Mercury and Jupiter. That's the overall mind. There's an opportunity there, and there's an opportunity with um, feeling empowered in your relationship. That goes exact on the 19th, just before Venus kind of drops off and goes into weakened state. So anyway, let's uh, let's get going on this. Thursday, the 16th, we have the Sun and Saturn at 27 degrees of Aquarius, perfectly conjunct. And this is at 1048. This is the climax of the weakened ego state because Sun is... The sun is in detriment in uh, Aquarius, but it's also conjunct with the the king of limitations and challenge. So could be ego challenges here. And this is Thursday the 16th at 1048 a.m. That's the climax of this. But the energy still hangs out for a few more days while these are still in conjunction. And... Um, so that's for ego, but then here's Mercury exalted in Aquarius. Um, now, today, this day, when ego is uber dimmed or uber um, weakened, we also have the moon makes a square over to Jupiter, which means that um, it's kind of hard to feel optimistic on the 16th Thursday. All right, now we have an extra intense alignment with Venus and Neptune. This was a carryover from last week when we talked about it. But this is the extra dreamy um, Venus being exalted and extra strong and so extra harm and harmonious. We can have a dreamy effect on our uh, what was Valentine's Day yesterday. And uh, that rang true. Very dreamy, but um, it also could be extra connected, really, really connected. So although ego feels alone and constricted and weak, you're going to have your power with relationships and intuition and connectivity in the Pisces world. And that's the rule of thumb for this week. You're going to find your power in Pisces. Friday the 17th. It's um, avoid ego, the continuation of ego, ego struggles, and pay attention to these opportunities. These are massive opportunities while ego struggles and look for. So in these opportunities, here's what to, here's what to look for to get those opportunities. Profound dreams. So be looking at your dreams, be recording your dreams, and don't just scoff them off as, hogwash or crazy or whatever, actually do some work with them. And then you have the relational power. That's the Venus and Neptune, but, um, that's also moon. So moon is sextile over to Venus and Neptune, making it very emotional, and very inter interconnected. And so there's a power there and then connecting the lower mind and the higher mind is with Mercury that's exalted and Jupiter. All right. So those are your those are your keys for Friday the 17th. It's all about opportunities. And then on the 18th at 4:34 p.m. the sun will make its way into Pisces. And so gains a little strength. It may seem a little counterintuitive where fiery home of sun is in Leo to all of a sudden be jumping into the ocean. But um, at least it's not weakened in that Aquarian state. And so now getting a lot more connected, getting a lot more um, possibly emotional, succumbing to the, the central centering inner truth from Pisces and the intuitive knowing. So now we have three planets in Pisces. So the emphasis now is a little bit on Aquarius 
especially with Mercury exalted and the moon going through there. But now with Sun, Neptune, and Venus, a um, lot more emphasis on this inner journey. Then on Sunday, we have starting to get that lopsided alignment again. You know, you have all the planets in one half in less than 180 degrees of the zodiac. So it's kind of like lopsided and, and you know, how the a wheel that's heavy on one side tends to kind of whip around really quick when the heavy part goes down. Um, just feels lopsided and that overall context might be here today. Sunday the 19th, we have Jupiter entering in a conjunction with Chiron, so it's very optimistic healing there, and it does serve self. It serves self to heal others. Um, we also have the alignment of inventions, Mercury exalted square over to Uranus. There's that pressure to know, the pressure to invent, it's pressure to use insights from big change, big change to a very, very strong mental aptitude of Mercury and Aquarius. So I would expect some, some cool inventions happening in this time frame. We're at Mercury at 12 degrees, Uranus at 15, so not perfected yet. That'll be in the, the next few days. Um, also, the other archetype here is that even though Mercury is strong here, a square over to Uranus means that you can find yourself changing your mind. And that's kind of part and parcel to this Uranus archetype. Yeah, change is what gives you inventions. And then you have Mercury and Mars. So this is easy to convert your thoughts, powerful thoughts, into action. Monday the 20th, now we have the new moon. So this is at 1.05 a.m. on the 20th. So we early in the morning. The moon will be completely blacked out. And it'll be at 1 degree Pisces, 22 minutes. And then just a few minutes later, we're just talking within an hour at 1.55 a.m. And this is all Central Standard Time. Venus goes into Aries. So you have we have Venus still in Pisces technically at the time of the new moon. So in this whole cycle of, uh, of Pisces, the new moon, starting something new, generating, generating new ideas, but in a Pisces sort of way, um, in internal knowing deep truths and those deep truths, just like our summary slide become actionable. If you decide to use the Mercury in Mars, uh, Mercury trying Mars. Now, the other thing with this new moon is Saturn that is conjunct, so three degrees away from the new moon. So initially, um, you're going to see, unfortunately, this new moon kind of be tainted where this is a time for new projects and maybe not yet. Right now should be sort of planning it, but we have Saturn kind of messing with things a little bit, making it a little bit harder, making it a little take a little bit longer, more difficulty starting your new project. So just like any new moon, though, you don't want to be starting the project right at the new moon. You want to maybe have your ceremony here, um, but it includes the intention of what you want to do over the next two to four weeks. In this lunar cycle, is about 28 plus days, and you want to be doing it on the front side. You want to be building. We're going to be talking about all this in our first lunation for March, and we'll do that, uh, hopefully have that out next week. But um, but this new moon will obviously already be passed, and so I'm trying to give you a little bit of information here about lunations that might be helpful for you. But at this time, Saturn is messing with the new moon, so wait a little bit. Wait a few days. Wait maybe to the first quarter, which is a week later. Um, and then you can start your project. 
And then that way, the moon will have plenty of time to get away from this uh, Saturn influence of hardship. And then at 1.55 a.m., Venus is going to go into Aries. And so on the on Monday the 20th, when most of us wake up, we will have mm, maybe a little bit more contentious, easier to get defensive in relationships, communication, breakdowns, maybe maybe Venus um, or your seeking pleasure maybe gets tainted with a little bit more selfishness. And in some counseling theories, it's the selfishness that always causes the disruptions in marriages. But so watch out for that. Watch out for um, contention and people walking on eggshells in their relationships and Maybe, maybe, maybe some fiery at the same time. And, um, and there is a time to use your relational skills in an airy sort of way, in a good way that produces good outcomes. So at the beginning of this lunar cycle, the new moon, as you wake up on Monday, the 20th, realize you just need to envision what you want to get done over the course of the next, you know, call it two weeks to the next full moon. And that's the period of time when we're going to start drawing down our, our output. And this is in alignment with Mercury trying Mars, by the way. So still about three degrees away from a perfect trine. But once the moon progresses out of this Saturn influence and hardship, um, you should have no problem getting stuff done, especially with Mercury and, and uh, Mars. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that during this cycle, since this is more of a kind of a timestamp of the overall cycle for this 28-day cycle, the new moon in Pisces, it might be a little bit hard because of the Saturn influence. And what that'll help us do is to go deeper. It will help us sort of bypass the ego as the ego kind of shatters its glass house and forces us to go really deep inside to where the insights, the big truth it really resides, the intuition. It's there. This is how we're connected to others is that emotional body and the subconscious and the superconscious, all that's there. Okay. So anyway, let's move on to Tuesday, the 21st. We have the moon is obviously starting its progression outward from the new moon and makes a conjunction with Neptune right away. This means we have profound dreams, very emotional dreams. And, uh, and then you can see Venus now into Aries. On Wednesday, wow, boy, it, boy, that shifted quite a bit. It's, it's overall influence now is Aries. We went from Pisces to Aries in one surf week. That's quite unusual. But one of those is Chiron. It's not quite the magnitude of a planet, but... In astrological terms, it's still there and still uh, weighted towards the Aries dominant. And we'll most likely be talking about Aries next week, although I don't know, because we still have to do the triangulation and see what's there. But this one perfects. This is Mercury and Mars in a trine perfects. And this is going to be the strongest ease of thoughts turning into action. And if you look at where the moon is, the moon is in Aries at this time. And this is, a, this is right at the time when you need to start your projects. And so that's what Aries is really great at doing impulsively. This is the time to impulsively go do your projects. And if your mind's telling you you should be doing it, it's pretty, pretty reliable because Mercury is exalted in thoughts in the lower mind, right? So good chance that this should be a good thing to do for your, make sure your intentions are whole for your Pisces new moon 
agenda or this Pisces agenda and go get it done. All right. The I Ching says hexagram 61, centering in truth. No surprise that the dominant energy this week was Pisces, because this is it, centering in truth, connecting with the fundamental wisdom that is within you, within other people, and within all of nature. That is Pisces. Truth becomes power when you will let go of prejudice and make yourself receptive to the world as it really is. When your inner life is clouded, your influence in the world is likewise hidden. If you are fearful, you will be attacked. If your cloak mysteries with dogma opportunities for insight will be lost. In a debate, the power to perceive the truth in another's position is essential to winning the contest, especially as Venus goes into Aries. Line six says, the power of inner truth is rooted in the tree. Birds come and go. Talk is cheap, but integrity is mighty. And integrity is mighty. Following the Pisces intuition will not steer you wrong. All right. And before we get into our summary slide for the influence, let me show you this added thing that Radio Hill alluded to. When I got this insight, I was at a bazaar. We went on a trip about five hours from here at a concert, big, voluminous energy, and I got this insight. I got this picture of the graph, and um, I should graph out the surf energy. Well, um, so I took out my phone and put a note in there and said, remember, because I didn't think that I would be able to remember that. And sure enough... When I got home, I remembered the note, and not only that, but Radio Hill made the comment, hey, something along these lines. So, phenomenal. And I think that speaks to the Piscean energy, the Piscean connection that we have, and, and, and the actionable truth. So, here's what I have. On the bottom here is Thursday through Wednesday. This is Thursday the 16th, and... The blue line is the Piscean inner knowing. And so it starts fairly high, but it actually peaks on, um, da, 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 da. well, peaks. Hold on. Let me go. Might have messed this up. <laughs> Bizarre. No, it's Monday. All right. So it peaks on Monday. I was thinking the new moon was on Sunday. So Monday, the new moon, and it's peaked. And this is the Piscean energy, the inner knowing, the deep truths. And then it starts tanking off because planets like Venus are leaving Pisces. Um, but it's still high in that we have the sun and Neptune still rock solid there in Pisces. Um, and then the actionable truth is the big influence that I mentioned early or at the at the onset of this video, which is Mercury exalted trine Mars, spent a lot of time there, and this one starts relatively low, uh, but it, um, I can't remember the exact why of this line, but on Saturday you get a midpoint, and then a little dip, but it goes straight to now it's just the trine gets more and more perfect, and it perfects right on Wednesday, so that's why it's such a high, it's a dominant energy on Wednesday, the 22nd. So does this help? I don't, I can't, uh, this is unusual that I have two main energies kind of wrapped into one. As you can see, deep truths become actionable is the overall energy. And so does that, does all that, all that make sense? Comment below, please. And here is the summary for the influence. And I need to go over to nine. Nine is my shortcut, by the way. All right. The influence overview. This week, truth is a major influential theme. That's Mercury exalted mainly, but also Pisces inward truth. It isn't about book knowledge. This truth we are yearning 
is for the Piscean inner, inner journey to your intuitive center. The depth this week is profound and principled. We are all connected at this deeper layer, and ultimate truth resides here, deep within. And again, deep truths become actionable. Now, before I get into the summary slide, I would like to show you the solution. So we're transitioning over to the solution now. Solution is actionable. This is what how we should behave or recommendations for behavior to maximize the energy. It's 60, limits and connections. A key to successful life is to select your limits consciously and carefully, discriminating in the setting of personal boundaries, but also knowing when to fly in formation. Think about the context with Pisces with this. Pisces are well known for self-sacrificing, and they just, it's almost a guaranteed, they will sacrifice themselves and their own needs for others to a point where it gets sort of resentful inside and they they start and get angry at other people and that's how they know they need to place limits and connections there are limits to the the sacrificing and so this is a perfect in my opinion a perfect thing for us all of us as we all go deeper within and do the piscean thing of self-sacrificing sacrificing for the betterment of the whole but we have to have limits aim for a middle way between discipline and freedom of spirit in groups and organizations rules and regulations should strike a balance between being too strict and too lenient the best path is one that allows for unfolding of individual potential while encouraging self-discipline and focus along the way now we go into our conversion chart and we see the new moon on Monday, early wee hours of the morning. And that's in hexagram 55 of the Rave Mandala. And then in sidereal work, we're back to Aquarius. Okay, we're going to use these for our triangulation. And here is hexagram 55. It's called abundance. Abundance is strictly a question of spirit. And we have line two, distrust. Abundance hampered by slander or gossip. The gift of being able to penetrate to the center. <laughs> it's direct for the I Ching and the Pisces and all that we talked about. So the gift of being able to penetrate to the center that may demonstrate effectively through its relating talents that its trustfulness is genuine. So not only do you get to the center, according to the rave mandala and where the new moon resides, the Piscean new moon is at the line that says the gift of being able to penetrate to the center is basically you get there effectively and you trust that it's a genuine insight that you get. Emotional stability and the strength of the spirit is dependent on being trusted by others. All right, now we're into our solution summary slide. And we just read through those. We have the limits for I Ching 60. It says balance the extremes. The rave says use the gift of being able to penetrate to the center and its related emotional stability and strength of spirit. And then we have sidereal Aquarius. And so let's triangulate all of that. Here we go. If you are going to reach the divine destiny of your deep inner wisdom and truth, you're going to have to honor this week's I Ching solution of setting at least some boundaries for yourself because the Piscean gift of service might pull you in all directions away from center. The rave shows you both the rewards of going within, that's emotional stability and being trusted by others, but also the risks of not going within, being caught in a loop of feeling distrusted. That's a big foot stomper. Rewind if you didn't catch that and listen to that again. So first off, 
avoid challenging hecklers and slanderers. This forces you into the negative loop. And that's that was by the rave. I just didn't read it. Second, use the Aquarian skill of, of observing and detaching just enough in any balanced way to help with recognizing when you are exceeding limitations and not living in a balanced way. So you can use the sidereal Aquarius to observe yourself, observe to see that you're in a living in a balanced way. Aside from that, go deep within, find the intuitive, divine, inner Piscean truth. The statement that I would like to use, you can use whatever you want to, but I live only from the divine truth that is found deep within. And this really timing for the weakened ego and ultra weakened ego, weakened son, is perfect in my opinion because we can just watch ourselves. That's Aquarian too. Aquarius is the observer. And you can see that you're maybe whiny or, or, or ego is complaining a lot, really negative. And you can remind yourself right there, aha, I'm not living in my divine truth. So go within, go into the body, go into the, uh, the torso area. The heart is all there in that front torso. And there's some chakras associated with it, sure. But intuition is a learned skill. The Pisces energy should help you with that. And some of you are very talented already. Go within. Don't let ego second guess you. And know the truth. Knowing, like a Gnostic, knowing it's true is different than reading a book. And having a memory of that and having justification. It's, it's a speechless area. It's an inner knowing that just knows, and it doesn't necessarily know why it knows. It just feels the intuitive strength of the Pisces intuitive energy. The divine inner truth is there, and we all can tap into that. So live this week in your divine truth that is only found deep within, not up here, not on your mind, even though Mercury is exalted here. Ego is kind of part of this too. And even emotions are in there as well, which is kind of a Piscean thing. But intuition, down in your torso, that's the only place you're going to feel it. It'll feel like a knowing. All right. I think that's a wrap, everybody. Enjoyed it today. Um, you know, give me some honest feedback about all the new things. The the symbols on the first chart. Let's see, let's give you that chart again. Is this helpful? Uh, is it too much? Is it too chaotic? We also have the. Is that I get it? The graph. What do you guys think about the graph? Oh, come on. Why does it do that? Right there. Is that helpful? Um, these these uh, energies were not all that differentiated throughout the week. I'd say the actionable truth is the weakest on Thursday, highest on Wednesday, and relatively high, and it's about the same as the Piscean inner knowing during the middle part, Saturday through, I'll call it Monday, through the uh, the day of the new moon, Saturday to Monday, you're going to have both of those energies really high or relatively high. All right, that's it. See ya, and um, we'll see you next week with possibly two videos, a surf report and then a, our new style of lunation and, uh, and future casting. All right, see you guys.